Hi guys, in this video, part two of discrete random variables, um, I'm actually, I've set up a new scenario. So this is what we did in part one. If you recall, we were talking about a random variable called X being the number of accidents for a US male from 20 to 25 in a given calendar year. This was the probability distribution of X, and we answered a bunch of questions on it three probability questions, basic ones, and then we also got the mean and the variance of x. Okay, that's a sigma here, by the way. Okay, so uh, we went through this process. If you missed this, go, go back and watch this video before you continue to this one, because what we're going to do here is going to build on this. All right, so this example that we're doing is completely dependent on you understanding what we did in the first video. Okay, so let's read it. It's a very short, concise setup. A very simple insurance company charges males 20 to 25 $1,000 a year plus $350 per accident. <clears throat> so this seems like, uh, and what we're interested in is finding out uh, it in learning about this new random variable which is how much does the insurance company charge uh, a randomly uh, selected male 20 to 25 okay so this is a new random variable here uh, we can we can call it y and we could clearly explicitly define it <clears throat> why is the annual bill or the annual charge from this insurance company to this specific group of people that we were talking about originally and it seems like Y is completely dependent on the number of accidents that that US male 20 to 25 got in. So Y, as I've defined it here and as I've set it up in this little short little setup here, is completely dependent on X. <clears throat> okay? So in this type of scenario where you have this relationship, there might be some real simple shortcuts and some principles that you could use so that you don't have to treat this Y in isolation. You don't have to have its, it doesn't have to have its own probability distribution clearly defined. As you can see, I provided no probability distribution for Y with the probabilities of Y. We don't have that, okay? But because we know that Y is completely dependent on this particular x, now we can exploit this this knowledge and answer a question specifically. I want to find the mean of y and this variance of y. Okay, so let's see how we would do that. <clears throat> First of all, let's understand a little bit more about the nature of the relationship between y and x. It says here in the wording that. Uh, the company insurance company charges these particular this particular group a thousand dollars, right? No matter what happens to you, if you're one of these U.S. males and you get to zero accidents, you're going to get charged a thousand dollars. If you get into one accident, you're going to get charged this thousand dollars. Even all the way up to if you get into four accidents, you're still going to get charged this fixed amount of a thousand dollars. But then it goes on to say that plus it charges a thousand dollars a year plus three hundred fifty dollars per accident. So plus three hundred fifty dollars times the number of accidents. And what is the number of accidents? Well that's exactly what X was. So in this case times X. So if so we we've made an equation which clearly defines the the nature of the relationship between y between this new thing we're talking about here, which we're going to call y in a second, but I don't want to call it y just yet, and x. Okay, so this is how they're dependent. This is a, a mathematical. Uh, definition of how these two, this scenario here is dependent on the previous scenario here. So why not, why don't we just call this Y? Okay, and in this case if we call this Y, this amount, 
then why is the, uh, the, the amount, the annual bill, that one of these randomly selected uh, individuals would get charged at the end of the year? So, for example, if I randomly select one U.S. male, 20 to 25, at the end of the year, he, he gets into, let's say, he's one of the ones that got into two accidents. I can just plug into right here where I see X, and we can know that his annual bill is a thousand plus three hundred fifty times two, which makes a thousand seven hundred. That will be this particular individual's annual bill, which is what I call Y. Okay? So Y is a random variable because it's numerical outcome depends on a chance experiment on a, on a random phenomenon and the random phenomenon that it depends on is the is how many accidents he gets into that's clearly something that's random um, okay so now what can we answer about why so let, let's clearly write that relationship y equals 1000 and let's put the dollar signs Let's put context on these examples, not just mathematics. 350. Let me use just x. Okay, so times x. This is what y, this is our clear definition of y. Now, before we jump in, we have to notice that this, the way it's defined here, looks like something we've seen before a plus bx or if you've seen mx plus b you'll recall that this is a linear function okay it's a linear function if you were to plug in a bunch of points for x and then plot it on a line on a cartesian plane you'd end up with a a straight line okay this is a linear function and if it is a linear function so y is a linear function of x, then there's some interesting things that happen. So let's go to our question. Question A says, what's the mean or expected value of subscript y, of y? Well, remember how we got the mean of x? We needed the whole probability distribution. But here, since we've understood the, that y is completely dependent on x, and furthermore, that it's dependent through this function right here, which is a linear function, then we can exploit this particular um, shortcut, if you will. All right, the mean of y will be simply equal to a plus b times the mean of x. For us, a is the a here is a thousand. That's the fixed part of this linear function, right? That's the y-intercept, if you will. You pay the 1,000 no matter what. That's the fixed part. And b, I'm, I'm using a and b from this equation here, is the variable part. Or if you're looking at it graphically, it's the slope is 350. And it's positive 350. It doesn't always have to be positive in this example the annual cost goes up as you get into more accidents as x goes up so for us this amounts to one thousand dollars plus three hundred fifty dollars times the mean of x which we got in the previous video which was two point eight accidents okay so let's do this in excel equals 1,000 plus 350 times the mean of x. And voila, that simply, you get the mean of y. You don't need the entire probability distribution like we had for x to answer this question. All right? <coughs> Next, the variance of x. Well, this one, you'll remember, we got the variance of y. It was quite a long process. If I click in there, you could see that we did quite a bit of work here, even with this just four possible values. It got pretty, pretty long. The cool thing is, 
You don't have to go through that whole process here. If y is a linear function of x, then the variance of y is simply equal to the variable part of that linear function, the slope b squared, times the variance of x. It's as simple as that. Recall for us, b was the variable part. It was $350. So the variance does not incorporate the fixed part, the a, if you will. Okay? So we're going to be doing 350 squared times the variance of x, which we did over here. It was simply 1. Okay? So let's do that in Excel. Equals 350 squared times 1. Okay, and you can see that's a very large number, and these are both dollars. We should probably make them dollars, although variance is dollars squared, right? And so that's why people recommend to take the square root of variance called the standard deviation because it's more easy to interpret because dollar squared doesn't really mean much to us. So let's get the standard deviation while we're here. It's simply going to be the square root of the variance. Voila. And this we can put a dollar sign on. Okay. It happens to be uh, 350 because we had this really bizarre situation where our variance turned out to be exactly one. That's very rare. I made this example up, the numbers at least, and it just so turned out that way. Call it luck or what you will. Either way, we got the mean, variance, and standard deviation of a, ra a new random variable which was completely dependent through a linear function on previous random variable, discrete random variable we discussed in, in the previous video. So if you have a linear function of a random variable you, and you need to find the mean, variance, standard deviation, you do not need to necessarily have the probability distribution explicitly stated for you. You can exploit some basic principles that we went through to get these three items. Okay. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, till next time, subscribe, comment, share these videos. Check out all the other stats videos I have on my channel. I have over 200 videos. Hope they're helpful. Have a great day.